This is the A to Z podcast. I'm Zach Jackson. He's Andre Not A to Z podcast.com, Facebook.com slash A to Z podcast. Shouts as always to scene to the honeymoon grill to American fireworks. Andre, we're going to start with this. We're going to play a little American fireworks glory days mixed with some trivia and mixed with some chuckles. Trivia too, huh? So uh, free agency, the NFL league year is around the corner. Right. Right. So the other day, before I dove into one specific article on anything, I decided I was going to devote an entire day to research. You know, what were free agents getting paid five years ago? What were guys getting last year? Uh, You know, what what what's the kicker market going to be like? All this stuff before I kind of plot my way. Right. Because it's. It's logical to think the Browns are going to add a kicker. Now, whether they're going to go spend on one or but just I just get... heard I just heard the, uh, the special teams guy talk about how much he likes Greg Joseph's leg. Well, the thing is, is that Greg Joseph's never done it. They love his leg. They just, you know, know. they're going to be in playoffs. They... I'm busting balls. Right, right, right. So I, love, anyway. I love when they have that. The guys are, oh, I love everything about it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So I start going through. So we know Phil Dawson was the kicker here for a long, long time, and he was so good, and he's the second leading scorer. In franchise history, um, behind Lou Groza, who played for 21 years, and and that'll never be broken, right? Right. So here's my question to you. Who, in the new era of the Browns, is the second leading scorer? Since the team returned in 99. Since the team returned. You won't get it. I I would not have gotten it in 10 tries. Second leading (laughs) scorer. It's not Braylon Edwards. (laughs) Braylon Edwards is third. Ah, look at that. Just because I knew he had 17 touchdowns. And only with 170 points. Yeah, it's not a lot. So who will be second? There's not a running back. Who? I just, just tell me. That's a good question. Billy Cundiff. <laughs> Our friends, my friends called him something else that I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I was floored. Billy Cundiff? Really? I was floored. Wow. Does that say a lot about where they've been or what? That's why we're telling you guys. Obviously, pause. in today's games, yeah, kickers score right, the most right, points. Right, right. But that's another reason to pause on making the playoff shirts and everything else just yet. <laughs> yeah. It's a great sign because for as great as everything they have, look at how far they have to go. Billy yeah. Cundiff? So oh, I, my God. So I was, you know, I, I, I was looking on Dawson, and I, I immediately went back to glory days to the 07 game in Baltimore, yeah. the stanchion game, yeah. and all of that stuff. So I'm like, I brought up like three different articles in the box score from that game to make sure I had all the details. Um you know, and, and then was just kind of – that was in one window. And the other window I was tracking, like, all kickers. Uh, the Chargers had seven kickers in five years. Adam Vinatieri is 46, just signed it. Like, it's different. Right, you know, there's right. there's not one common path. But I went back and traced that whole thing. And then when I brought up the scoring, I, I, I would not have – have get and I guess you know no Phil kicked for so long that nobody else has been there right kind of replaced Phil for half a year when he got hurt to say yeah then he had the job for one full year and then one part of a year he lost it but yeah that's Braylon is third I'm glad I had the Braylon one because I was like I don't have the court? window up anymore but yeah. it's Braylon like 28 touchdowns and one two point conversion right or something and that's like all the reason that. I went with Braylon because yeah. we had 17 in one season and I was like well no one else has scored a ton of touchdowns yeah. that is wow. And compare that to the other teams, I bet, since 99. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it would be that is that is I, you could win a couple beverages at your favorite watering hole. But when you one. look at it, and it's Billy a different Cundiff. game, this isn't yeah. fair. But when you look at Lou Groza's extra point numbers, or even like Don Cockcroft yeah. or Matt Barr's extra point right. numbers versus Dawson's, like yeah. the Browns just didn't fucking score they, touchdowns. They couldn't score touchdowns, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> right. That's why this season was so amazing when they were going yeah. off this past season, and we'll go over it, but when they were scoring in the red zone. Touchdowns, yeah. Like, cause that's like we're like, whoa! They can actually. It's it's not just that Phil Savage said Braylon caught sixteen and we all got extended. Braylon dropped sixteen and we all got no, fired. fired. It's that Braylon and his mom blamed the Browns for inventing the drop stat. Yeah, <laughs> remember that? That shit? stat wasn't even around till yeah, until this. It was yeah. like, no, till your son couldn't catch anything. I wonder why. <laughs> I mean, you know, we got to get Braylon on the podcast. I was all for that until he pissed off the Big Ten Network last year. Yeah, you know, if I thought he would be. He could himself. No, Braylon could be. See, the thing with Braylon is, and I think this is where we're at with this podcast, in all honesty, and that's the word. We can't interview certain people because we got to be honest. 
Yeah. Like, I can't have Braylon on without mentioning things sure. that are going to piss him off. Right. But I would say, Braylon, I'm not trying to embarrass you. This is a part Fair. of your story. Yes. Just like with Deke, we can't have Deacon on because if we, if we have Deke on, we got to ask him <laughs> to tell some stories. Yeah. And if he tells some stories, he's right. going to probably tell the last well, stories he'll ever tell. Here's how I remember it. And I was young, so I looked at everything a lot. Like, Braylon was smarter than most dudes in the Braylon, very room. smart. Yes. Right. And, and that kind of became his enemy because he thought that he was so smart and yes. he thought that he was yes. always pulling something on someone. Yes. And it's kind of like it's when you good. start going down that road, yep. it's hard to pull off to the side. I hate <laughs> to compare the two because they're to totally different and they're not the same. But they are the same and their intelligence is the best thing they got going for them and their worst thing they got for them is Trevor Bauer. And they're so intelligent. Like Trevor's thing is, I don't lie, I don't pull punches. And it's like, okay, you don't, but a smart person knows when to pull a punch. Yeah. A smart person knows where, like, all right, I've said enough. Let me take a step back. Sure. Braylon, same thing. Well, I'm smarter than you. I'm going to talk through you and around you and to make my point that I'm smarter than you and a better athlete than you. I'm superior to you. Like, and there sounds like somebody else that's popular in this world right now, too. Um, that's Braylon. Braylon can't, Braylon couldn't help himself, right? How many times did we sit there and we'd watch Braylon and you would just, I would have a conversation with him. Then the media would start asking him questions and you'd be like, Braylon, why are you getting pissed off right now? Why are you? Why yeah. you don't have to go there? Yeah. And like I said, and and there's a story out about Bauer right now in SI, and you'll like it. His one dating, like they didn't even tell the best part of his dating. Like I like I already told you, um, but he's basically like when Bauer meets a potential romantic partner, and this is true, I know it, romantic partner. He outlines he outlines for her the parameters of any possible relationship on their very first date. <laughs> I have three rules: one, no feelings. As soon as I sense you're developing feelings, I'm going to cut you off. Because I'm not interested in a relationship and I'm emotionally unavailable. Two, no social media posts about me while we're together because private life stays private. Three, I sleep with other people. I'm going to continue to sleep with other people. If you're not okay with that, we won't sleep together and that's perfectly fine. We can just be perfectly polite, platonic friends. Oh, that's perfectly normal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who says this dude's messed up? <laughs> and that's what I'm getting ready to deal with for the next six months. Well, you know what's funny about and that? it's all true. Kind of the, you know, the that and when we were talking about before, it's like we just got done speaking at a school, right? Yeah. And we talk about presentation matters. So, like, especially here, you know, when we're doing this and, and pulling no punches, right. frankly, like you don't want to apologize for telling the truth, but, like, presentation matters. Presentation matters. <laughs> we just talked about that. Yeah. There's, like, we're not sitting here. And I think it is a great class, and I think it's something that we should all discuss. discuss. Um absolutely honesty is the best policy uh, and people want real authentic people but most people don't want it all they don't want it all the way funky yeah you know it's like all well, right sure so you can take me to a certain well place. not only do they not want it there's times where it just doesn't it's really just, call for it right you can make your point state with, the facts without yeah going all the way yes and i think trevor and braylon i never would have put these two in the same box but they are a little we almost had trevor on the podcast two years ago before he became trevor bauer bauer and then i and he said to me and i'll give him credit he goes Dre, you know he swipes right but go ahead yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he said he definitely does um he goes dre i can't come on a podcast because i'll talk to you normal and i'll get in trouble for being too honest mm -hmm. like trevor knew that two years and this is before trevor right. you know trevor was still like everybody was like he's just an okay pitcher no, he's he's going to win a Cy Young, and he's going to piss people off as he's... Well, look, true or false, the reasons the Indians got him when they got him for oh. what they got him is because uh, the original team was like, we're not dealing Arizona with this. Arizona drafted him in the first round, yeah. third overall like pick. Like top five, right? Yeah, third overall pick, <laughs> and traded him six months later. Like, that's you never been heard of. Like, you yeah. never do that. That's how much he annoyed the management of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And that's why... And like, and he's got all these, and like, and I believe him. Like I, like I told, so I was just talking to another class a couple of days ago, and they're like, "How do you get along with Trevor Bauer? Or how do you put up with Trevor Bauer?" And I'm like, honestly, I tell him to fuck off when I need to tell him to fuck off. And you have to. He's one of those people you have to like mm -hmm. because he's so blatantly honest. You got to be blatantly. Yeah. You got to tell him, "Hey, shut up. You're right. you're wrong here." Well, sure. And I will say this: if you if 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 he, I don't want to say trust you, if he knows you have good intent, like he knows I'm not. Like, I'm, I'm just honest with him. He's honest with me. I'm honest with him. He doesn't take it personal. But he does take it personal when people laugh at him. 
Does that mean you know? Does that make sure. sense? Like, it's sure. like if you laugh at his techniques and things like that. Well, look, he he is the the new rule of A to Z. When you're always on Twitter, you're always on Twitter. You're always, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So you got to dial it back, and he can't. Like, and like I I had to show Jen. Like, he got into it with a woman a couple weeks ago or months ago, and it was getting bad. Right. And it was just a terrible look. It was a terrible look. Right. Yeah. Terrible look. I don't even know the details. Yeah, you don't have but to. But I remember reading one And I article. finally said to him, I finally texted him, was like, what? I said, what the F are you doing? And when he gave me the background, and like, I know him, and I know that he doesn't lie. And when he messes up, he'll say, I was wrong here. I'm like, dude, it's not a good look. Stop. Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, what about all this about her? And I'm like. Yeah. It don't work that way. Nobody Trev. cares about her. I was like, yeah. I go, Trev. Nobody know. Uh, Trev. Nobody knows who she is and what she is. And he goes, well, she's a terrible person. And here's why. And he had like done research and, and like, and she was a terrible person. But it didn't matter still in the winning. public consumption of yeah. what was going on. It doesn't matter that she was a bad person. It doesn't matter that he had a police report on her. And I'm like, I go, look, look at all the time you've just spent on someone that doesn't matter. Ignore it. Right. And I think that's a rule for for all of us for social media. It ain't. It ain't that. Not many people are making money off Twitter, all right? So stop stop thinking, acting like you are. Yeah, I mean, it can be exhausting. Um, that's for sure, you know? Um, yeah, so listen, two, two thoughts on baseball while we're here. Yeah. Um, one, you know, my cousin plays at YSU, and mm-hmm. they opened last week at Mississippi, Mississippi. State. Yeah. And they honored uh, Will Clark. Yeah. And a couple of other guys, great. and it was like 15,000 people oh, yeah. at the game. Well, Friday. that team had Will Clark. So, how cool for these kids at Youngstown State to play in right. front of 14 people yeah. at Eastwood Field? They had Raphael Palmeiro on yes, that team too. Yes. Yes. And they yeah, had and their was pitcher, a third guy. Like Roger McDowell or something oh, wow. like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know they just made the College World Series yeah. last year. They were f- that, that was one of the best, though, in the 80s. Like, when uh, that team was when the old Easton bats they yeah. used to rock. That team, <laughs> yeah. That oh, yeah. College baseball was ping ping. Good for them. Yeah. Good for them. No, that was a cool class. And second thing, um, you know, I'm a little uh, – I hate to say this, but I am jealous of you heading to Arizona. Yeah. I'm, I'm especially old and cranky. I'm tired of the cold. I'm tired of slipping yeah. on the ice. Oh, I know. I was out your way the other day for a birthday party, and, like, it was snowing, and it was, like, cool. There were kids there. I was like, this is going to be awesome. And then when I left, it was, like, this ice storm. Yeah. I was going down the hills on Granger Road and shit. Not and fun. It was not fun. Yeah, I don't live in an area that's so fun. So I'm, I'm ready for that. But just – I'm curious to know. Now, you're there a lot for the games. Yeah. So people see that. Yeah. Like, what is a day at spring training oh. when, there's, when there's not a game? It's got a little bit – It's. I'm glad you bring up games because it's a little bit like what you have for training camp. We'll go in the morning. We'll meet with Tito at like eight in the morning, nine eight thirty. We'll have like clubhouse time from like eight thirty to nine thirty or ten. Um, you put that sound together, and then the team will go out and have like BP, and they've got like like we're like they've got like nineteen baseball fields, and like you know right. a couple guys will go hit, and this one a guy will do infield here, and I'll go like, and I'll admit the first couple of days I'm I'm a, you know you're at everything, and then like. By the fifth day, it's like I don't need to go watch this asshole swing. Sure. <laughs> like literally, like I'll go outside to like to get some fresh air, and I'll go out and watch. And like if somebody like is coming from rehab or something, like if if Lindor is running the bases or something, maybe I'll go out and watch that. Last couple of years has been to see if Michael Brantley will break down again. Uh, and I'm only saying I, I'm glad I can be truthful about Michael Brantley now because that's one of my favorite people, and he's one of the biggest jackasses. He's like, but I respect it. Like he just he's like Dre. I don't need the media. The media don't need me. He goes, they don't want to know me. I'm boring, and when I'm not boring, I tell the truth, and it'll hurt people's feelings. Presentation. Presentation. <laughs> like, but, think about, but I'm using him as a great example because, you know what, Brantley and I have texted more this offseason than ever before, and we love it, like during yeah. college basketball. But when, we, when I covered him, he was like, you know how I feel about stuff, and if you start telling people, I'm going to look like an asshole. And, he's, he's, and I'm like, well, you are an asshole. And he goes, well, that's for only my friends to know. <laughs> and he's not like but he's very down. But, like, we would go watch him, and he'd be like, Dude, if I get hurt, they'll tell you. You don't need to come follow me to watch. I'm like, it's my job. Yeah. Um, so, so we'll look, do that, and then like I'll go back. I'll eat lunch or whatever, and then they usually play at 1 o'clock. Um, the cool thing about Arizona is all the games, if they're not at home, all the games are at the most 35 to 45 minutes away. I don't have to go to all of those. Um, like Usually the road games, if I'm not doing them on radio or TV, I stay back. Um, but my kids won't be there the first week or so that I'm there, so I'll probably just go. So there won't be any podcasts uh, yeah. either. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. Let's just be honest. Re- regular season, Dre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that dog's got a pretty so, good, good on At the some way. point, like, 
they have full practices, right? Where yeah. they go out and work on their pickoff plays and their yes. rundown plays, and like they they're doing it right now. Yeah, because after like when a season starts, you, you don't, don't have time do for that. that. No, you ain't got time for all that. Yeah. So yeah, the pickoff plays, pitchers throwing in the you know throwing the different places. Uh, the catchers de- dealing with bunt plays. They'll do right. all that now, and they'll do a little bit of that leading up to the season. But you're right. Once once we get out of Arizona, that's so. But like, I, and I've never been to a, a spring training game. Uh, I've been around some spring trainings uh, from time to time. Um, like in the preseason in the NFL, the, the guys play a quarter, quarter and a half, and they stand there. Like right. the starters play three innings in spring training, and then they go golf. They're out. Yes. Yeah, like they don't even they're stay. Out. Oh, starting pitchers on days that they're not like Corey Kluber on the day he ain't pitching. Like when the team goes down to go to the game, he goes right to the golf course and goes and hangs out with his family. Okay. It's like that. And these guys have earned this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's fun watching. Like they'll play three innings. And like well, on our TV broadcast, like we got one Saturday. Um, here's something that's funny. Like, it's the first preseason game of the year. Like, everybody's going to get, like, one or two at-bats to get the hell out of there. So, what happens? Watch. I don't even know. But I'm telling you right now, as we record this on Tuesday, I guarantee that my seventh, eighth, or ninth inning interview will be with someone you have no idea who it is. And I probably barely will either. <laughs> because well, that's all, the, all, the guy, all the guys you know will be back at their apartments, will be back on a golf course. Will be, they won't be at the ballpark. Let me know how it goes. I'll be watching Horizon League Hoops. I bet you will. <laughs> I probably will be, too, on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't want to dwell on this. Um, it's a long season, and we'll see what happens. And we know the Indians have not had a good offseason from a PR standpoint, from no. a personnel standpoint. Uh, and, and in a way, it's unfair that Frankie Lindor, two plus years from free agency, is having to talk. But in a way, this is the reality, right? Surreal. What have we talked about on this podcast yeah. for the last five times? Reality. NBA hypotheticals. Yes. And you know, and, and the reality is there. Uh, and it's going to hang up. He, he's, <clears throat> you know, I don't think he um, gave Cleveland warm and fuzzy feelings with his answers right. on Monday or whenever it was. But. You he know, I think any- he answered it like a pro. Yeah, he did. And I think he's just going to have to deal with the fact that this is what's out. And the team's going to have to deal with the fact that this is what's he out ain't there, go- too. I'm going to tell you this. He ain't going to deal with nothing. Because I'm having a pregnant pause because I can't, I'm, I can't speak for him. Right. But he didn't say anything on Monday that I've had the conversation. No, it wasn't. I, right. There was no jump off the page. No, but yeah. I've had the conversation with him for five years. Like he's well aware. He's very aware of his settings. He's very aware of what's going on. Yeah, he is. I've 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 done this, and I'm saying this in a in a good way. He's one of the youngest people that understands what his worth is, and that's why I've always compared him to LeBron. I've seen him with with, with New Balance shoe guys. I've seen him with the Under Armour guys. I, I've been around his agent. I've been with him in his in Puerto Rico. I'm around him a lot. I walked his first time he walked in the club. He understands his worth. Um, we got a running joke. Don't ever put him on. Like I'm surprised. Does he want to sponsor a podcast? <laughs> Shit. At some point, when he finally signs a big contract, he will. Um, like here, I'll give you a perfect example of it. If you guys go around the internet, there are pictures going around of, of Frankie yesterday. Everybody talks about the blue hair. That I we knew that was coming. Um, because as much as he doesn't like to be in the spotlight, he he wants to be in the spotlight, and I and I kill him for it constantly the one thing that surprised me is he took a picture he let people take a picture of him and his tattoos there aren't many pictures or videos of francisco lindor where you see him with a cut off t-shirt and you see his tattoos yeah. and it's his purpose- presentation it's, matters it's purposely yeah. and he tells me dre don't put me on tv with all my tattoos because i don't want young kids thinking that's the way they should look like the dude it's like yeah it's presentation but it's he understands the selling points of life. And he, and he says, he goes, I don't want young kids at 16, 17 years old thinking getting tattoos and everything is cool. I waited till I was older. So don't take video of me unless I got a shirt that yeah. covers up. This other thing is don't take pictures of me with iPhones in the background or, or shoes or shit that don't pay me. He's like, Apple don't pay me yes. shit, so don't put like Apple. When LeBron will go to the podium and take the power. Power aid. aid. Yes, yes. <laughs> Same thing. thing. Yeah. He is very aware. Frankie is. And. I see people on Twitter kind of react. The reality is a reality, people. Mm-hmm. The Indians know. Look, from ownership down, and I'm not, I don't want to get in trouble for saying this. I'm just being frank. I'm being honest. The kid is going to be one of the highest paid baseball players in the world. I think we all know the Indians can't afford one of the most expensive players of all time. I hear people constantly say, well, if there's a guy to do it. And, I've, and look. As a fan, and I would that, say, and that's a hell of a case. Yes, yes. As a fan, I would agree with you and say, if there's somebody worth giving, you know, three hundred million dollars for ten years, 
it's Francisco Lindor. And he may get more than that. Yeah. But as a franchise, and hell, we're going through it right now. If he goes down and he's out, they, like it just you can't they can't afford to do it. And the thing is, ninety percent of baseball can't afford to do it. So do you get mad at him? Do you get mad at the Indians? Or is, is are you mad at the situation? The situation is what it is. Yeah. The kid is the kid is unbelievable. Look, the Indians did everything right. They drafted the right kid. They cultivated the kid. They pissed him off and didn't bring him up when he wanted to come up so they could get an extra year of him. Right. Um, they've done everything they can do. Yeah. He's sure. become a superstar. Well, he listen, is I, I, I thought it was important that we address it because it's out there. I thought it was important that we address it because we do talk about the bigger picture business yes. and realities of sports. And, you know, I kind of feel like this, you know, you, you can be mad at Clutch and Anthony Davis. You can be mad at the Indians. You, like, it comes to a point where you're just mad. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. we're on the outside of all right. of this stuff, right? right? And it's fun, and it's entertaining, and, and winning is great, and the guys that do stay, and uh, the heartwarming stories is great. But, like, guys, at the end of the day, these, these games are played by millionaires, high-maintenance millionaires who won the genetic lottery <laughs> in most cases. Yeah, That's why sure. the underdog story is it's sublime. Right, it's a good right? one, right. The fact is Francisco Lindor was put on this earth to play baseball. And smile. <laughs> and he's done uh, that. Yeah, And, and he's you got a window go. to maximize and make possibly as much as any player ever has. Well, and that, and yeah. at a time when baseball free agency is like, whoa, and baseball in general is like, whoa. Um, I think baseball – I'm glad you said that. I – I'm going to get back to the Lindor thing. I don't think baseball like it, I don't know. I don't. It's not even a battle that I want to have, and I don't, I'm not standing up for baseball. Baseball is what it is. I think that's the biggest issue baseball has with itself. Mm-hmm. They're having an identity crisis. You can't make everybody happy. Let Trevor Bauer be Trevor Bauer. Let these guys like let the games be three hours and thirty minutes. It's not for everyone. I agree. Like you can't be friends, and like I feel like baseball is like they're well. Let's put a guy at second, or let's do this, or let's speed it up. The game is the game. And if you don't have the patience to – and I'm not, I don't blame you. If you don't have the patience to wait three hours, three and a half hours, if you don't have the patience to sit through a game, to me there's nothing better than having a beer sitting in a baseball game shooting the shit and, you know, and, and it goes as it goes. But baseball better stop trying to, to bend over and make everybody happy. It's not for everybody. Just like NASCAR is not for everybody. I mean, their race was like 19 – it still may be going. It Jimmy was Hamlin, so long that I ended up watching the end of it. You're right. And I was busy all day. <laughs> It started like two. It went to like eight fifty. <laughs> like I just think, and we got to take this in life. Did Dick Trickle win? Dick Trickle did not win. He couldn't get his uh. tricky. He couldn't get his tricky to Dicky. Um, I'll save my Dale Earnhardt jokes for the uh, text. Here is the other thing with Lindor, and I think this is the one thing that he says perfect, and he means this because I've busted his balls on it. He says, "I if I'm paid what I'm worth, I'll never leave." You can't hate him for that. Right. <laughs> like, and, I'll, and I always say to him, well, and I say the same thing. Well, like last year, him and I got into it. I got into it, but I push him because, and we have good conversations. He pushes me. We talk shit to each other about different stuff. Uh, first thing he said to me when he saw me is, you know, it looks like you lost weight, Tubby. Like he's like, we're, but remember when he took LeBron down, the mural of LeBron. I go, you really want to be up there when you know you could leave in a couple of years? He goes, well, that's not my problem. And, and, and I'm not quoting, but close. He goes, it's not my fault or my problem. He goes, but I want to represent this city, and I want to, and I feel like I'm the best athlete in this city, and I rep- I want to represent it. I want to be up there. Yeah. I want people to, stri- I want kids to go by that and strive and, and and want to try to be like me. And I go, do you want to deal with it? I go, do you want to deal with it when they yank that son of a bitch down and you're not here anymore? Do you want to deal with that? And he said to me, he goes. I don't live my life that way. He goes, if I live my life and I work as hard as I possibly can, I still should be a dream for somebody else to, to for kids yeah. to look up to. I want kids to look up to me. Well, and I was like, all right, good view. But I go, your feelings will be hurt if that thing is yanked down. Everybody's calling you an asshole for being yeah. greedy. Well, when LeBron left, it certainly opened the door for Frankie Lindor and Greg Joseph. And those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you said New Bell. I got to tell yeah. this story. So Greg Joseph. Um, not that I'm going to be running the Boston Marathon or even the Akron half, but Uh-oh. I've been trying to get my fat ass a little less fat before boat season. Just trying to feel better. Yeah, like, I feel you. you know? I feel you. Because you know what you're going to do. Super summer. Bowl is is my new yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Right. So on Monday nights, I'm motivated because there's Big 12 basketball on. Yeah. So I go put my ass on the treadmill or the Stairmaster for a little bit, and I watch the games, you know? So I did that last night to the point that I got home at like 1030. 
and I couldn't walk. <laughs> so I wound up so I couldn't go to sleep. Right, but I was right, like, right, man, right. I, I'm yeah. hurt. like, I, I am in sad ass shape. Yeah. I got no problem sucks, saying that. Right. So I, I'm hurting. So I was stuck to that couch right over there and just scrolling Instagram and Twitter, like just Damn. mindless stuff. Right. I. And you saying New Balance reminded me of this. I'm so glad I did. I found somehow. The Kawhi Leonard? No. Uh, that's... An account where this guy finds sneakerheads pictures. They're cheesy ass yeah. pictures. Uh-huh. And superimposes sketcher shoes over them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, I'm going to find it. Oh, you got to. I, I'm going to highly recommend it for you guys. Uh, <laughs> um, it's called. God, what is it called? Uh, I, I I know I'm ruining it right now. It's all right. Um, <laughs> Sketchers, yeah. As you're talking about that, I'm looking at Twitter, and this is Akron in a nutshell. It's called right? Nice Sketchers Diameters on Instagram, and it says a collection of the hottest people wearing the hottest shoe, the Sketchers Diameter. It's this brown old man shoe. My dad has three pairs of them, yeah. <laughs> and he takes them and puts them over top of Jordans uh, and, and of all, all sorts of things. And I just would really recommend it. That's just what kept Imagine me. Imagine having time stuff. to do that. Well, sure. Imagine having. But time But you know to what, Dre? What's that? People have gotten famous and, and made a little money That's on true. the internet for That's for much less creative things. I'm about to make my kids do that. Open up their gifts on YouTube. Kids make millions. Like that's what my kids want. My kid, you, you've been in my house, and AJ wants to look at the wants to look at the iPad. Like his sister and them, they will watch. They watch kids play on YouTube, and these kids are getting paid. I'm like, what? Like, yeah. What do you get out of doing that? Like, what do you? Why do you want to watch bizarre. a kid? But I will say, when we like a Christmas day, like when we we got kids had all this new stuff, and I'm like, AJ, how'd you know to put that together? And he was like, Oh, I watched him. I watched him do it on YouTube, and he's and I'm like, he's doing all kinds of. And he's shit. four. He's four, right? <laughs> Smarter than me. I'm like, shit. I'm like, <laughs> but like literally, he's doing stuff with the toys, and I'm like, how do you? And he's like, Well, we watched it on YouTube, and they were doing it, and and we would have never known how to do no. this. It's it's a different world. It so is. in so many different ways, it when is. it comes to that. Type of stuff. So when we do what we did today, which is sit in front of what fifty kids, yeah, maybe not even, take. like a little, little bit of more glory days here. What goes? Wait, wait, American what Fireworks. Go, yeah, what goes through your mind? Because we both sit there and we know it's like, all right, we're going. Look, we can't bore these kids. But when you're looking at them and they're looking back through you, like that blank glare, like like today, like you well, said, I thought this group was pretty this good. This was good. Yeah, and you got a cuss word out in there, which was good to break the ice. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, like, I'm a bad person with bad habits, so please don't tell your teacher. Like, don't judge your teacher for what I say. Right. Because right. I'm trying to deliver some sort yeah. of positive message. And you know what? It's immature, it's immature to say it, but it's real. When you say the word ass in front of a bunch of high school kids, it wakes them up. You grab their you attention. You grab their attention, yeah. for sure. I, I, might, I might or might not have been aware of that. <laughs> There might be a method to my madness. Yeah, no, there is. But like, what what comes to mind? Like when you sit there and you think of yourself in fifth period class, I like think twenty four years ago. Because as you always tell them, we're only trying. We we get that we're not for everybody. But you just if you can help one kid in that setting, then you've done your your job. Um, sure, so, I, I feel like it's our responsibility. Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Because it's my, my I wouldn't be where water is not the only place that we do it. You know. We didn't do St. V Career Day this year for, for some reason, but we've done it for several years. My wife just texted me the uh, – I'm listening. She just texted me the Trevor Bauer dating tips. <laughs> That's where my life is at right now. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you asked me that question. I try to put myself back into being 17, 16, 17, 18 years old. And what would make me want to pay attention? What would make me not try to write a letter to the girl that I got yeah. that, I, that I want to look at her leg? What would make me, <laughs> because if I had that, that was like a free period, right? right. Some, oh, you bring two idiots in here to talk to me. Well, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. That's right. in my mind. And that's why I try to say to them, and, and I mean this, and, I, and anybody out there is looking for jobs. I know we've got a lot of old people that listen to your asses may need new jobs too. <laughs> Go t- if you have a dream, go to that place that you're dreaming of and say, hey, teach me. Most people will take you in and let you intern or, 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 or spend a day with you, have lunch you with you. You learn a lot on YouTube. Yeah, yeah we're going to YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> go well, find I mean, You out. told a story about telling the Cavs that you knew how to work a program yes. that you had never seen before. Never. And basically had to go online. You got your size up. four in the door that way. I did. <laughs> It helped me tremendously. I got a job from the Cavaliers I had no business having. Hell, that business, hey, that job still runs through the raw tree. Yeah. Hell, Sabo has turned it into a turn. It's just turned it into a, a all star career. Oh, absolutely, and he's very good at what and he he's does. good at what he and does. He started somewhere. Yes, yeah. And, it all and he's been all around the world, right. quite literally doing right. it. Right. So that reminds me, um, a good foot in the door. Get your sketcher in the door. Story. <laughs> so one of the things that makes me cranky. 
um, when I do go put my fat ass on the treadmill is like, uh, well, first of all, I notice they play a lot of unedited music and I'm like, clearly I'm not scared of the F word, but you know, different, different settings, different strokes for different folks. But like, I, I have a certain set of podcasts that I like to listen to and you know, sometimes they play the music so dang loud that I can't hear them. He don't. But this is many years ago. I remember I was walking somewhere and, or, you know, maybe riding the exercise bike or something. I was listening to Ian Eagle, who is very accomplished announcer, yeah. all around good guy. And, and in Cleveland, uh, he's unwittingly kind of a joke of the Browns are so bad for so long that they yeah. always had Ian Eagle. He's now been, he's, like, he's he's been like the team. The he's been like the team. Like, play but, play guy. you know, he tells a story of this is all he wanted to do. And he's, you know, waiting for his break and he's doing high school games and he's doing, you know, and the Mac with two A's yeah. <laughs> and all that stuff, right? And so he, I don't know if this was CBS or one of the regional networks, they needed a boxing announcer. This is, you know, when Ian was breaking in right. and boxing was big. And he, oh, and he sat there and told the guy, I've, I've been in boxing. I've, I've done boxing 12 times and he had never done boxing. Yes. And he studied his ass off and he knocked it out. And now he, you know, he's doing this. So, right. uh, you know, we're not encouraging you to lie. No, but. So you guys, sometimes you got to stretch the truth to get where you got to get. Yeah, and, and if you're and look, willing to get there. One thing, too, I, in retrospect, Dre, I don't like when we come on here and we are bothered by some Twitter commenter, yeah. some bulletin board commenter, something stupid. Because, frankly, that's on us that we let ourselves right. get dragged into you're it. Absolutely right? right. However, this is a Twitter-based, Twitter-driven show. We know a lot of you, some in person, some in not, through social media. And, frankly... You know, we communicate that yeah. way, right? Yeah. Um, we okay. have thousands upon thousands of, of followers. We are active on multiple social media yeah. fronts, and we do that. And when we talk to the kids who are much more likely to overreact, to let their emotions carry right. out, to tell on themselves if maybe they're doing something that you need to be 18 or right. 21 to do, um, it kind of really makes you think because we don't ever want it to be a lecture. But, like, sometimes I'm tired of blue balls Sam twenty seven on Twitter like uh, hating me. I, right. I don't care. Right. But but like drop it. I blocked you, right. it's over. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Think about that the people that you block or you mute and they still still try to find ways to get into your comments. Oh. Like, I mean they, I saw like like I said, I spent an hour and a half on that couch last night just scrolling online, just trying to get to where I was tired of brainless stuff and ready to shut my right. own brain down. And I scrolled upon things and I thought, you got it. you know? But then the, the, the ultimately Got you. It's on me. Got you. Right? right. And you know damn well. Okay, the Indians have taken a lot of shit. Some of oh, it yeah. Oh, yeah. And over 162, even in the good years, I'm right? I'm going to see some shit. You're going to get fed some Twitter shit. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I'm getting some burgers. Let's start this week. Yeah. So, as soon as we put up the lineup, where's the outfit? You're not even in Arizona. Yeah. You're yeah. already taken. I'm already, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a part of it. So, like, let's do better. Let's let's not respond. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> you're right. I, and, I, and I'm. And uh, it's easy right now. Easy sitting here with you BSing. Sure, you're absolutely right. It is, and I'm and I'm saying this as a person that doesn't have it figured out. I'm, I'm admitting, like, how do you take the emotion out when you can't, when it's like because, like you said, like the first the first three are kind of you chuckle, the next three you're kind of like, yes. really, and then like the last ten are like, fuck you, screw you, fuck you, like it's like, I think that's a human that's human nature. Yeah, I'm not saying it's okay, and and you know what, the days where I do just ignore, I don't feel better immediately. I feel better like an hour later, yeah. two hours later. Yeah. There is, I'll admit, there have been days where I've gone back and forth with said idiot for whatever reason, and I wake up the next day. I'll admit, I've, I, I've, I've, there's been a couple times I wake up and I'm like, yeah, shit. Well, like, that regret, right. You're that right. regret. You're right. You know, where you wake so, up, it's like, why did I do that? Or why did I even say anything? Be, back? Because presentation matters, and because being right doesn't mean that you won right. or you're right, uh, it's like this. So we are encouraged, the athletic to respond to the comment section on our articles. Y'all and, have some doozies too. <laughs> and the one the one good thing about it is that at least people have to write their real names. Not necessarily they could sign up under Joe Smith if right. they wanted to. Yeah. But for the most part, there at least some accountability there. Yeah, They're not true. blue balls Sam twenty seven. Blue balls right? Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so and in even if we weren't encouraged, I have just thought that um, like these are paying customers. Oh, it's pretty cool to have somebody that wrote an article say something back yeah, to you. Yeah, so like I owe it to them to yeah. at least check. Like here's the flip side. A few months ago, because presentation, man, I said here on this this podcast, I said I can tell readership is up because the overall IQ in the comment section is down. 
Wow. And I didn't like how I said it. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I didn't like how yeah, I, I said it. I remember you said it. Yeah. You know? Um, I chuckled. It's truer time. than ever. Yeah. Um, but you're writing about, but you're also at the time you're writing about a team that's hot and fun. And well, sure. Like, it, it's, like it's it's totally right? different. That it's, plays into it a little it's bit. It's totally different. It's just now I'm, it's speculation season, right? John Dorsey's not sharing his plans with anyone, let alone me. So I say that dude in Denver will know something. I say I could see it going this way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he will. Perfect. <laughs> he does have a plug in the building that they haven't cut off. But anyway, uh, um, you know, like I see it going this way. Or based on two years, and this is why I did this research. I, I see this, and then when I'm told I'm absolutely wrong, <laughs> like, right. yeah, come on. So it, it it does take a certain level. My first Kareem Hunt story last week that had 200 comments in the first 10 Ooh. hours that we talked about. Right. I didn't even venture to wait it out. Nah, I didn't need to. You don't need to. But like an, another one where a mailbag say where I'm talking six different topics. You can yeah. I don't know. Well, on another level of this, you talk about presentation. And I tend to agree with you. All-star games are all-star games. And anybody that goes on the radio or or podcast or Twitter and tries to pontificate one way or the other about, oh, the game is – stop. Right. If you're judging the game off an all-star game, <laughs> yeah. the problem is you, not the game. But I'm going to ask you, you're a basketball fan. I respect your basketball knowledge. I went to a girls' high school game last week. I've been to a couple high school boys' games. I've been to an Akron game. I haven't been to many games as you, but I've seen some hoops locally. And I've watched a lot of NBA and I watch a lot of college. And now I think this is one, and this question is kind of open ended. Is basketball, and you've, you've seen a lot of different levels, is basketball better? Like, let's forget all the Twitter shit. Let's just talk the game of basketball. I wasn't crazy about all the shooting of three-pointers, but after seeing all the different levels of basketball that I've seen in the last month, I kind of get it. Everybody shoots threes now. Everybody. Girls basketball, boys. Oh, yeah. but everybody shoots threes. It's And like my buddy told me, he goes, as much as I hate it, they do shoot better than they've ever shot before. And when watching, even watching the All-Star game, the little bit I watched, it became a three-point contest, and it – I'll admit it was kind of fun to watch guys throw shoot threes and to see, not just shoot threes, but can make them. Yeah. Have we got so caught up in all the other stuff that we don't realize that we're in a we're in a different phase of like, and I would love to talk to Babe and guys that coach it because I'm sure it's different from them. But there's a lot more coaches, you know, preaching. Which one of Babe's personalities would you like to have yeah. on? <laughs> the coach. <laughs> I don't want the little the okay. little the little jackass with the white belts. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's so much to Before that. Before I make my media request yeah. to the athletic director, I just wanted to. Know. Yes, yes. Let, yeah, <laughs> let me know. The athletic director knows what that schedule we gave him this week. Talk about Hell Week. Um, I know there's a lot of coaches coaching. Manny Machado to the Padres. Uh, oh, for how? Oh my! I just I, came across. I knew it was. I, I knew it was possible. I didn't think it would happen. Wow! But uh, all right, we'll get to that. Yeah. But is basketball? And I'm because you're a purist. So it's not even a purist. I think the game. I'm a hoop a, fan. Yeah, you're a hoop fan. I think the game is a lot better than we give it credit for. Is what I'm going to. I think the game is. I think the game is healthy right now. I think that's a good word. We're playing at high levels, and I think for all of what a lot of people don't like, um, 14 year olds with mixtapes and all the transferring and the me me first stuff that's at the highest level. That's the league. That's a the best soap opera on television. I think we have a lot of good players. I, I don't think it is positionless basketball, it, or it will ever be. But I think there are more big guys that are more skilled, skilled. than ever. Right. I, I mean, certainly the three point line is is devised ways to attack. Uh, you know, in some cases, you absolutely do not shoot a seventeen foot two. Right. You, you get the three, uh, and coaches will tell you, Dre, that the emphasis on the three point game has actually made it so when you do have a true post player, oh, it's open the he court can up. be more dominant it's than It's open the court. It's open things up for him, and teams right. aren't used to defending. Right. They're used to running to the three-point line and defending. And defending the three-point line, and, and the driving kick and is so, so big. Whether now. it's at the high school level or the smaller college level, when you have a, a, a high-level post guy, he has more room to operate right. than ever. I just, I'm, we don't have these conversations anymore. And I, even and we can go with baseball. And well, because we don't talk about any games in the NBA. Right. Any Right. And the game is like as much as I don't like watching Houston, Golden State has made basketball fun, man. And and to be to Mike D'Antonio, he has to a little bit. 
defensively and some of the things they do. But there's a lot of fun teams to watch play basketball. Sacramento's fun. Even though Joy, Joy out and, and <laughs> I don't have anything against the Kings. The Kings yeah. got something against themselves. Yeah. It's not me. Read the athletic. <laughs> it's not me. I we like, do appreciate you listening. Yeah, <laughs> I do like how Fox plays. I like what they have. I like the Paige Stojkovic. Like, our age is showing, too, because the guys that are putting the teams together, we watch play. I watch Vladi. I, watched- I went to the lottery last year. Oh, my God. Standing in the lobby. Right. It was like a who's who. Of 90s basketball. And like nine or ten guys, I was like, is that him or him? And I was like right. over there, like charging my phone yeah. so I could Google all Google the who it was, right. Yeah. I just I wanted to get that out there as we go along. And I know like in Northeast Ohio, basketball's in a good place. It's if you can if you can erase and it's kind of like life now. Yeah. It's like going on Twitter. Like you just like you just use Twitter perfectly. You look down while I was talking, hey, Manny Machado signed, and you moved on. Yeah. Cut the fat. If you cut the fat, basketball's pretty damn good right now, is my point. It is. But it's hard to cut the fat. It is. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that because this is one point I wanted to make. Uh, and it was a week ago tonight they came from 22 or 23 down with nine minutes left. Oh, my. Yeah. Um, watching Zion, and, and we will argue, and we did, and, and you're right that a lot of guys have not had a jump shot <clears throat> at that age. He plays with such pure joy. Yes. And watching him, it's just fun. And a lot of times I'm watching with no volume or I'm right. doing something else. But if Duke's on, man, I got it on the TV or the computer. They're must-watch TV. Know? And last Tuesday I stayed out way too late and had way too many pops. <laughs> yeah. Because even though it just wasn't their night, they're on the road, league game, Louisville's got freaky athletes. Yes. It's their Super Bowl. Yes. And I'm sitting with a basketball coach, and he's like, I've seen this a million times. Look at Duke's body language. And I'm glad we stayed. Yeah, because he, had to eat he just right. came yeah. back, and they just and, and these are all prima donna kids, all AAU kids. But they like to compete. To the the Duke boys like to compete. And though down twenty some with yes. nine minutes left, they decided they that weren't game done. told me something. They wanted yes. to compete. Yes, and and I think as scouts, like RJ Barrett is skilled <laughs> as it gets. But you just said something about Zion. Why he's going to be the number one pick? He plays with the joy. He brings. You know, he bring he makes eyes watch. No, his game is not perfect. But, and we all know this, it's going to be very hard to go into the principal's office, the, i.e. the owner's office, and not say draft this Yeah, kid. well, right. I mean, you know, <laughs> basketball is healthy because uh, on July 1st, you know, free agency and all this drama that's all year long, it finally comes to that. And then it's kind of anticlimactic, right? right, after the first two guys sign. Yeah. But right after that, the freaking summer league is going to be sold out, and it's oh, going to yeah. be on real TV because Zion, yeah. because Ja Morant, Jax. because R.J. Barrett. Ja you know? Morant, that kid is yes. athletically. His I'm, videos. I've watched a couple. I actually watched the second half of his yes. game last week. That's when do I like Twitter? When there are Ja Morant videos. Yes. yes <laughs> right? I love it, too. Well, here's the other thing. I've watched, and I'll bring this up because part of going to Arizona for me, and you know this now, and I know this, is that I kind of get, because I'm going to be on the West Coast basically for the next month, I've started paying it. Like I've watched like four Gonzaga games all the way through. I've watched two Nevada games. Like I, my, I, it's so much more expansive as to what I've watched team wise. Yes. I barely watched the Pac twelve or Pac like, but I know yeah. I'm gonna watch a lot when I get to Arizona. Unfortunately, right. it's not good. It's bad. It's yeah. really bad. Yeah. But I've watched a lot of basketball teams I would never watch before, and it hit me the other night. The I was feds like, made it bad. Yeah. <laughs> if the, the feds, feds been watching, only they knew. knew. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess that that's what makes me ask the question. Basketball ain't that bad when I'm staying no. up till one o'clock watching Gonzaga no. and not mad about it or watching St. Mary's. Watching like- Pitt Greensburg miss the front ends, that's bad. <laughs> uh, that is bad. But you're right. Like I went, made a point last week to go see Buffalo, top twenty team. Oh yeah. Because they're there they're they're in town. Right. You know? Um, speaking of Northeast Ohio basketball, congrats to Cleveland State for hiring a guy with no local roots when Youngstown State's won six in a row. Really, congrats on that. Need to get out there. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's Say fun. it with your chest. And listen, you know, even if you look at it from a lot of people listening here, right, they might have watched Ohio State against Michigan State right. the other day. They certainly know about Zion. They might not have watched a lot else. But when March does come around, and it's later this year. It's just how the calendar fall. The selection Sunday isn't until St. Patty's when that's usually the first, first weekend. weekend. Yeah. John Morant's conference tournament games are going to be a big deal. Yes. The ACC tournament games are going to be a yes. big deal. And then when you get to that first round, the built-in – I mean, last year, Dre, the 16 winning, I would have bet you a million dollars that that would never happen in our lifetimes. Oh, and yeah. it just happened. Yeah. You know, so – Yes, this is going to be a healthy time for basketball, which leads into the stretch run of the NBA yep. and then the playoffs where at least 
in the East, there'll be some good. Drama. East gonna be some, great. Some good, there'll be drama from a basketball. The playoff is standpoint. playoffs. The NBA is gonna be good. Yes, it's gonna be good. Yes. Both sides. Both sides. Yes. Because getting is, getting to the West Finals will be Kentucky. Good. You know all the talk about, and I, and I know you know more about it than I do. And my dad called this out like three weeks ago. He's like, Duke's got all this love about their young guys. He goes, Kentucky's guys are figuring it out. Oh, that big guy is. That big guy. Yeah, like Kentucky PJ is. Go- Washington. Kentucky and Tennessee are going to play again. And Tennessee's legit too, people. Tennessee is legit. I've watched- they're an anomaly. They got no freshmen in the rotation. None. Yeah. None. Yeah. But so that's going to be another tournament that's going to be fun. I just wanted to get that out there. It's so fun. Yeah. It's so, it's so easy to talk about the drama of basketball, but the basketball is in a good place. It really is. And it's so good for us as we sit here to like talk about an actual sport. Right. 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 <laughs> like seriously, like as like I, and it hit me as we were talking. I was like, dude, basketball is fun. I know the Cavs aren't fun to watch, but there's yeah. a lot of other ones that are. So I don't know for sure, but I'm hoping. Um, that I can get when I get to Indy. Butler has a home game. I've never been in Hinkle. Oh, you got to go to Hinkle. Yeah, yeah he's a yeah. basketball nerd. I got to go. You there. absolutely. Yeah. Have to. So, Abs- you know what? Have they hurt themselves though by moving? Like, do they come too popular for their own good? Well, it's possible. You know what I mean? You understand? You know, you know why they I keep mean? launching these coaches? I mean, look, I it's know. it's the money game. I know. You know, they're a school that I just liked them a little bit more when they were maybe a notch lower conference well, sure. wise. Well, let me tell you how this works. Like the realities here. I just talked about we watch every Duke game, right? Yeah. And when yeah. we don't see it, it leads every sports center. Every Zion dunk is all across Twitter and Instagram and one. all this right. stuff, right. right? We haven't missed one. In the horizon, there's six ESPN games the whole year. Wow. And most of them are 9 o'clock Friday yeah. on the year. Yeah, that's true. So now there was more when it was they Butler. Had a, they had 11 a.m. Friday, when I was Friday talking, Saturday or yeah, Friday one. I was talking about this with someone the other day. And they're like, well, I remember watching Cleveland State. Well, yeah, that's when Butler was in the league. Right. You know, that's now they're Butler. gone. They get right. six games the whole year. Six. That's crazy. Yeah. Sorry. Now I'll... they get to say they have an ESPN contract. Right. But six games. Ain't... This is the reality. Yeah. That's a good you know? point. In, 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 in college basketball, I think people get turned off by the, the, the number of upsets and the unpredictability. Well, try taking a bus ride to Green Bay. Yeah. Playing a game. Yeah. And like these, these kids from Kentucky. Yeah. You know, they've been in this culture where they play four games a day and they fly. Well, when they got to go play a road game on a Tuesday night at Auburn and in Missouri where everybody hates it's the biggest right. game in town. Yeah. Like, it's why they lose these it's games tough. every year. It's right. tough. There's a human nature. Well, even in, those hor- in the Horizon League, those trips aren't fun. Like, like you got the Ohio swing where you got to play Cleveland State, Youngstown State. You got the Milwaukee swing where you got – and, like, it's a week on the bus with tutors, and it's not sexy. Like, it's not – like and it's and then, like you said, and you go into Milwaukee, Green Bay, where that is the big game in – Right. That well, is everything Even in, in the town. Big Ten, like, Ohio State will bus – to Michigan. the Michigan schools in yeah. India. They'll fly back, right, right, Charter. Right, right. Well, guess what, guys? There's a line down the low in, you know, where these teams don't don't fly. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, this there it's uh it's they're like the Pac twelve is getting murdered, right? Well, oh. they don't have charter flights. Uh, they have a bad T V deal. Right. So especially when the feds get involved, all of a sudden <laughs> the Pac twelve don't have the players that the big boys yeah. have. What's gonna happen with all that <sighs> What's going to happen with because like Arizona like this is weird still the whole like you know I don't what know. comes out of that like I, every once in a while you'll see on the scroll a coach's name FBI I'm glad you brought this up because I want to say this about the kind of the whole NBA discussion so when all this started to come out it was like well duh yeah right we know about hundred dollar handshakes and shoe boxes yeah, and all this right. stuff. And we know, of course, this deal was going on. Like, I laughed. One of the major newspapers, and when we were talking about Anthony Davis and his roots a couple yeah. podcasts ago, one of the major newspapers reported, like, somebody stuck their career out there. Like, his father was given 20000 by Kentucky. Like, we we know. Well, guess what? Ain't nobody getting Anthony Davis for 20000 No. It was like four hundred. Yeah, right? yeah. That's what they get but, Zach Jackson out there not for. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, anyway. People are like, well, well, of course, you know, and then there were some bigs in the spotlight and, you know, it ended up being the little guys taking the fall, which right. I guess is a lesson of America. But what people have told me, Dre, is that, yes, this goes on and, and there's always something going on. But sometimes guys have gotten these big time players by simply offering access and notoriety to their posses. And I know that's a buzzword and, and Rich Paul and LeBron hate to see it, hate to hear it. And I get it. But to the to the handlers, the AAU, just by giving them tickets, just by letting them be right. around, and so when you kind of look at the culture, and there's always an agent, there's always someone else, right? Absolutely. There's always someone wanting to transfer. So these guys have been courted their whole lives. Come play for us. Come play for this summer team. One year in college, they don't learn loyalty, and the people around them, 
they just want to be in the spotlight. Wow. So I've just yeah. been, you know, smart people have said it's not always a shoebox of cash. No. It's the, it's, we got a couple extra passes for the party at the All-Star. Bling, game. bling. It's when you come, we will make sure that you sit in the seats where right. you're on TV. Where you're seeing. And well, none of that's against the rules. You've, no. Well, Nor you've, should it be. No. It's, but that's, and that plays into what we talked about the last podcast. I get that Rich Paul isn't everyone's favorite, that Mav Carter isn't everyone's favorite. But you've said this about LeBron, and we've said this. Look, ain't no, no, ain't no more LeBrons walking through that door. No. Well, their whole team, I can give you all the glitz and glamour you want. What has happened with that group is unheard of, and it's probably not going to happen again. But I will give them credit. They got the opportunity, and they've ran with it, and they've made the most of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And, and, and I get there are kids around the country. There are groups of kids that are going, hey, we want to be the four horsemen. You know, like you're gonna be the baller. I'm gonna be the agent. You know, every they they're living. What was the movie with the TV entourage? We've they seen are, it here with like Joe Hayden and shit. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they're playing the entourage. They're entourage. Yes. Like they grew up. Like there are kids that they grew are. up watching entourage, they, and LeBron and his crew became entourage. And now you have a kid. You have kids that are Kentucky. I'm sure Zion has a cousin or an uncle. Or brothers, brothers, cousin, brother, you know, somebody named Williamson from South Carolina <laughs> is is living it up in Durham, right? Living it up. And he may he may be driving an eighty five Bronco, but <laughs> like an 05 Bronco. Yeah. But he's living it up pretty good and they don't gotta give him any money and there's nothing probably. But he knows I'm a step away from being able to because everybody's got a guy. Yeah. It's just, I think the disconnect A is that not everybody's gonna make that step. No. You know, like what happens when you just become a D leaguer? Like Zion is right. an outliner. Like he's like he's gonna make it. Sure. He's gonna get a lot of money. Sure, but like that fourth recruit that Duke yeah. has, and everybody's like, oh, they got the best. That guy's going. It's gonna be Listen, a tough go for. Yeah, him. I, I used the wrong word choice when we talked about them last week, and I just want to say this: um, those guys have done well. And Maverick, who I have my own feelings about, has taken his position, starting with Nike which we all know why they hired him. And he did the job for Nike. He delivered him, right? Yeah. But he has got himself into a lot of different things and has built his own wealth. We know that. I'm, I'm going to just come out and say it. I don't like those guys because I've seen them flat out big time people. Right. And I think, who right. in the fuck are you? Right. Because and we know them differently. But from, but a, we but know from them, the yes, standpoint yes. of getting their foot in the door and climbing the ladder, I got, you know, right. they, they've done yes. what, what you would want to do in that position. If they were the big time people and they were just some dudes from, from Chicago, it wouldn't affect you as much as it right. does because we we've no, we knew right. them when they were absolutely nothing, right. and we knew them where they work. We knew their I know cousins. I know, I, and sure. I don't disagree with why you feel that way, but I think at the same time, right. I got to take a, a step back from the scope and go. All right, yeah, they have accomplished something a lot of people haven't. No, they no. haven't. Um, I, I want to ask you about Antonio Brown and, <laughs> and some of the comments. Like Antonio Brown is not. Let me say this: he's not clean in this situation at all. I mean, he appears to, like. Should we really worry about him? I, I did not tell you. Like, my buddy, shout out to Dennis uh, and, and Ashley. <laughs> Dennis became a father this morning. Uh, biggest steal, one of the biggest Steeler family fan, uh, fans I know. I love him. Uh, and I told him and Rob that I can't wait for their sons to grow up to the Steelers sucking. Um, <laughs> but Antonio Brown is basically. It's not a surprise to me. Like, yeah, he's a messed up character. Like, there's a lot going on that ain't right. We talked about that a little bit the last podcast. But he's come out over the last kind of week or so. He's basically said, I don't like how Ben Roethlisberger gets gets treated compared to me. The quarterback's always the star. Bad presentation, Antonio. (laughs) Yeah. Is that what (laughs) – like, is he? he's making sense, but it's not going to really – like, fans don't care. Yeah. You know, people were talking about Kareem Hunt last week and this. Remember, we were in – I was in Pittsburgh the day Ben Roethlisberger came back from his suspension. And I was working for Channel 5. It was the first year I wasn't doing sideline. And I remember the story was – the story they wanted me to do, you know, after I did pregame was, hey, go talk to Steelers fans and see how they feel about Ben Roethlisberger. And I got to tell you, my feelings – I I was expecting people to be in outrage with every, all the stories that came out. And there were women wearing the pink – Roethlisberger jersey's going, he can't wait till he takes us back to the Super Bowl. The highest I, of NFL hypocrisy. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's another. Yes. And I remember in Pittsburgh, they treated him like it was like they saluted him like Jesus was walking on water, even though we had just read some of the nastiest, dirtiest stuff about him. Mm-hmm. They didn't care. He was their quarterback. Yeah. AB doesn't get that. And, and I get Tomlin is a let. Ben be Ben. And Ben, for all intents and purposes, for everything I've gathered, not the best person in the world. 
AB's trying to call him out on it, and it's like, but AB, you can't not play. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, though? This is, again, presentation matters, and the line is fine. AB comes off looking dumb there. Yes. And overall, he comes off looking cuckoo. Yeah, especially with But if look. he really wants out of Pittsburgh, and apparently he does, you know what really sealed it? The tweet when he said it's time to move on. There's yeah. no coming back from that. Right. Whereas the flip side of that, a week earlier, Rich Paul and AD go public with their trade demand, and they're the bad guys. Right. I feel bad. AD is in a bad place. Did you? If you've watched yeah, his body I, language, I think he got bad advice. In bad advice. That. Because if they wanted to hold Magic Johnson, if they wanted Magic Johnson to do that, and you know all that, all the layers that went into that, right. end up with Dell Dumps getting fired. Right? They could have. Right. They didn't need to do right. that publicly. Rich, you got and Rich Adam Silver get, has a point. Yes, you guys does. can have all this power. Yes. Don't do this. Don't do this. It's, you, you don't benefit from it. We no. don't benefit. It makes from the it. league look bad. Yes, and and and, that, and for the casual fit, and that's why I wanted to have the conversation I wanted about basketball. Basketball is not in a bad place. We got some. We no. just got too much information out there right yeah. now. Basketball is in a decent place where you look. There's but, too much rush to be out yes. there. Yes, you know, too much too soon. Here's the latest AB quote that I just picked up on. And this is just no feel. If you're one of those teams out there with the camaraderie bad, the energy bad, the players are haters, I don't want to play there. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go waste no time. AB, those are all the things you look yes. like. This is, is he, why they're not even going to get is, a first-round pick for you. They might that, not get a second. Could you imagine being that unaware of like your own surroundings? Like, dude, you, you didn't play the last game of the season. Yeah. Like that's no matter what what reason it goes back to. I mean, in Pittsburgh, dude, when I was there last week, they were murdering him. They were like, "Quote from AB, you know, I don't do nothing to it, draw attention to myself." Shows up to training camp two days later. <laughs> <and helicopter. laughs> <laughs> Horse and carriage, right? Right. But, uh, like it, you used the one percent rule when we were talking today, yes. and we were talking about the Josh Hader situation. Like AB is that one percent? He's one percent, and his window's closing. Yes. So, but somebody gonna keep. He paying. might be hurting his future earnings. Right. He might be legit fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right now, he is trying to maximize that window, and he's saying, "I'll pay for you if you got the checkbook." Yes, ready. I'll play hard, and I'll do whatever you want. The thing is, though, once this contract, and you've seen, see, you've seen him on Sundays do it for so long oh. that there is some team that's going to take him. I, you have to. If you're Sam Fran, why would you not? Because he could change you for three years, or no, not three. He could change you for a year and a half. I think he's got a year and a half, good year and a half. I don't know. I mean, I, I think he might have more than that. He, you really think so? I mean, little re, little receivers have a track, but this dude's freakish. He is a freak. He, he's, he's gotten freak. better, too. This is I not know. a guy that came in as Julio Jones. Right. Right? No, he had to, right. He's worked his way up. Right. I, and that's what I hate about this because he is one of my favorite receivers to watch because you on third down and seven in the fourth quarter, the entire stadium knows you're going to him. You can double team safety over yeah. top, linebacker underneath. He gets open. And as we've learned here in Cleveland many times, like in the NFL, there's no such thing as a long-term rebuild. No. You get one year where you're down, and then it's back. And so if you're right. San Fran, like, you know, the, the Rams are kind of at a crossroads. Drew Brees is older than me. Right. You know, like, here we go. If you're San Fran, you got to go for Jimmy it. Jimmy G's medical report's good, right? Right. Let's go for it. Right. What do you lose? Let's get some dudes on defense. Yeah. And let's go for it. They, I think they have to do it. I think so, too. I think they have to do it because he's basically said, and unfortunately, there will be some fans that go, see, this is a typical athlete. He pouts and cries and gets his way. Well, it's the 1%. Like, he can well, do again, that. Again, you can be right, but yeah. what do you gain from it? What do you it? gain from it? <laughs> All right, good for you. I'm going to go score touchdowns. Congrats. This, Congrats. Is, this is the yes. derivative of congrats. <laughs> it is. It is. And say, what, say what Anthony Davis. It, like, yes. Dell Depp's got the congrat. Here's what's different with Del, with uh with Anthony Davis and was with LeBron when he left. The NBA has structured it so guys get more money if they stay. Whereas you said Frankie Lindor said, when I get what I'm worth, that's where I'll go. Right. These guys have turned down more money, which turns more fans off. Yes. It's their personal decision, their personal business. You're not right. spending anyone else's money. Yes. But they've turned down more they've money turned, to do this. Yeah. Like I said, Anthony Davis and Rich Paul have botched this presentation. Might it work out better for the Pelicans and for Anthony Davis this summer and for the NBA? Yes. Oh, this summer. But it's be- just was a real awkward few weeks followed by shit. The season's not over for two full, yeah, two full months. Right. And that's where rich may have made. And we don't know this, but I think that's where rich made. And, and who knows? Hey, I thought about this the other day. Somebody made this point to me. Like for as tough as rich Paul has been and for the great decisions he's made, the money he's gotten like a Caldwell Pope. And like, cause he has gotten contracts for guys. Uh, the, the point guard with Milwaukee right now. And I actually like watching him play the uh, little guy, but they call him, they call him mini LeBron Bledsoe. 
Like he's gotten contracts for, for he yeah. has made a difference. Like, right. like we can say, well, LeBron without LeBron, he doesn't get there. Sure, that's true. But he's helped some guys kind of go from here to here. And who was at Kentucky when Bledsoe was there and now he's a scout for the team? Like they've infiltrated so many different structures that people don't even realize it. Brandon Weems, congrats mm-hmm. to you as well. I put an S on it for this year. <laughs> um as somebody said this to me, I never thought about it. If you're Brandon, if you're if you're Chris Paul, or Chris Paul, if you're Rich Paul, excuse me. Do you think you get intimidated a little bit by having a Michael a Magic Jordan like talking to you? You know, like, and not the magic, because, like, they all talk. Like, that's the thing that I hate, like, when people are, I'm like, it's not, cool. they all talk. And could you imagine being Rich Paul from, from you know, went to, you know, went to high school in Cleveland, Ohio, and suddenly you're having a swanky dinner in L.A. somewhere with Magic Johnson, and Magic's going, man, if you could help me. Well, I'll say this. You know what I'm like, that's yeah, got to be a pressure. Though. But I'll say this for these guys. They believe they belong here. That's you true. know, they've carried yeah. themselves as But such. they're still human beings. They are. And then we all we well, all, and the one thing we've learned this year is that LeBron is a human being. Yes, and not only what I mean by that, and I'm glad you said that. Yeah, they think they're big time. I don't care how big you think you are. There is somebody that can that that puts you back into normal human being. Sure, I'll never forget. And I've told the story before when Jim we were traveling with the Browns way back when Jerome Bettis was getting ready to go over ten grand, and I remember they came out for that Thursday night game. I remember it was cold as all shit. And Jim Brown is sitting on it with no cookies, sitting on <laughs> no chocolate chip cookies. He's sitting on the Browns bench. It's three hours before kickoff, and Jerome Bettis and Willie Parker, um, and they had another back. They were all pretty good. They were all doing their pregame fast. Running, Willie Parker, fast Willie Parker. And when they saw Jim Brown on the Browns bench, they all took off their helmets. They all came over and they paid homage. And it was. It was like, so what, Jim? Br- a so- moment you'll always remember. A moment I'll right. Yeah. They stopped me because I was like, wow, look at how. My point is, no matter who you are, where you get in life, there's somebody, sure, that checks your ego at the door to make you realize, oh my god. No, no doubt, no doubt, and it's been. Uh, I'm sure it's been a humbling experience for LeBron. I can't speak for him no. on that. You know? I think for Rich more so than Le- Le- LeBron too. But I think for Rich because okay, you've got to open up a lot of doors. You've gotten to a lot of places. That's still Magic fucking Johnson that wants you to help him. <laughs> sure You is. know what I'm saying? Sure like, is. It's not, it's not, no offense to anybody. I don't want anybody to take this wrong. Del Dumps is Del Dumps. Nobody, yeah, nobody. Right. And it's not. Just like Kobe, Kobe Aldis, Aldis, Kobe. That's what David Griffin's David I'm Griffin. I'm not putting anybody down. Right. It's way that's different. That's Irvin M. F. Johnson. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's, I that think that yes. played into, oh man, I can push it. I can push it to get out of this. Yeah. I can push. Right. It's like, no man, stay in your lane and do it how you've been doing it. Right. You've been doing okay. You just sure. put egg in your face on this one. And I just start thinking the pressure of, of Irving being like, hey, we only got three more years of LeBron. How many more, how much more time sure. we got of LeBron? Like, I think that all plays into this. Father Time is playing into this. Magic Johnson is playing into this. And you got an agent. And what is Rich Paul in five years? He's still going to be a big-time agent, but... I think LeBron has made this this whole operation bulletproof. Most times you would look at these guys and say, this this is going to end badly. Yeah. But I think there's so much freaking money involved True. in his level of prestige uh, and power. They got some cachet now. Because, like, nobody's... He's the most powerful current athlete that's ever lived. So there's, you know... Yeah. It, whatever is next, he's already, he's already right. in it. Yeah, you yeah. Know, oh, the no, ownership no. story came out. We, we've been all over that. Um, all right, so here's the deal. Um, you're off to Arizona in like three days. Yeah. So you're there for five or six? I'm only staying – you know what? I'm only going for the weekend. I'll be back next oh, week. okay. I'm, I'm going for – I'm going and I'll be back Monday for my dad's birthday, and then I'm flying back out next Thursday. Okay. Then I'm gone for six. I am going to take the equipment. I'm going to Indy on Monday or Tuesday, and I'm there almost the whole week, so – uh, anyway, guys, you're listening to this on Tuesday or Wednesday, probably. Uh, we're trying to say we don't know when the next podcast yeah. will be. Because if you don't know, now you know. Planes, trains, and automobiles, and um, you know we'll see what happens. But so we'll I would around. love to get you know a report from Arizona and a report from Indy. Uh, we just don't know when it will be. So you'll get something. Don't worry. Appreciate the support. Quickly. the feedback. Manny Machado going to San Diego. It's happened during the podcast. Um. We talk about the state. We've talked about the state of basketball. The state of football is pretty good, as we know. Baseball, I think, like I, I think baseball has got to stop kissing ass and just be itself. But does Sandy, does a guy go into San Diego? And we've been to San Diego outside their ballpark. Their ballpark is beautiful. It's San Diego. It's one beautiful. of the most beautiful cities in the world. I'm sure Yonder Alonso told him it was it was one of his favorite cities to ever live in. But does this? What does this do on the the sports scope? I'm asking you because you you listen to baseball on a boat. 
you're, not you're sure the, it moves you're the, the perfect per, you're the perfect person to ask yeah. for my estimation for me it's a story it's the league i work in but does this really move the needle at i don't all? think so neither do i i don't think so and they got Hosmer last year. Like there's like Oh, I forgot about Let's that. give them credit though. Like they yeah. have they're trying. They've been terrible since Tony Gwynn passed away. No, if I'm not trying to be funny. Right. But but, but kinda. Like they're trying. They've spent money now back to back years on Hosmer right. and now mm-hmm. Machado, and they've got the best farm system in baseball. Like they do. They legitimately have right. they got Fernando Tatis Jr. And you know his dad hit two grand slams in one game or whatever else. They've got some players. They got they got our catcher from last year that was not a catcher. Mejia, he's a he's an outfielder. Um, you know what I think part of the problem is when you just said Fernando Tatis. You know how I knew all these baseball players because I didn't do shit all summer long except watch Sports Center, and right. there's not shit else going on in the sports world. Yeah, so you every show. guy that got hot for two weeks, yeah, you knew, you knew him. Right? Today's yeah. kids, they don't know that. They don't know. No. And sports are and, and I think you make a great point. And baseball is what it is. Like you know. It, because that's just what it is. Like the AAF, everybody, they, they grab the buzz, and then they almost fold it after week two. Yeah, you know how much money that, it costs money. to run a football team? No kidding. You have so many players. Why are, they doing, I'm glad, why are they doing it right now? Well, because the, of the initial buzz of that of grabbing the TV, yeah. football TV crowd. I'm just know? like, time of year, I would love it if it was – I would love it in the middle of the summer when you really miss football. Yeah. Well, I don't maybe really miss get, football right maybe now. Maybe it will gravitate that way. Is that when the XFL is going to play? I don't know that. I know the XFL – it's going to play in NFL cities, and it's like, why? Yeah. Because you they know? got money from – You got to gotta tailor these leagues to TV. Yeah. Right? Well, Birmingham's a great place. They're actually selling out. It's Alabama. It's kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, people are going, sure. Right. And are. anywhere in Texas, they'll go. Yes. But I'm saying play in, high, play in one of them 20,000-seat high school stadiums. Play in a high school stadium. Yeah, don't yeah. be taking us to a big one. Like in Arizona the first week, there was no, like, nobody. Like, it was bad. Sun Devil Stadium was empty. Yeah, it was bad. Play, there's got to be a high school stadium or a, a Remember when we college. went to Mill Street in Tempe? Oh, I don't either. <laughs> I'd go again, though. <laughs> We were there for an Arizona Arizona State night uh, after they played their football game. Wow, we were young and dumb. And- Kids, if you're getting ready to go to college and you have a choice, go why why would you go where you got to wear a coat? Go to Arizona Arizona State and live your life, son. Yes, um, a to z podcast dot com, facebook dot com slash a to z podcast. Thanks as always to scene to the honeymoon girl to American Fireworks. We played some glory days. We talked some shit. We appreciate you guys listening. Share the podcast. Spread the wealth. Be in touch. Appreciate y'all. Konnichiwa, Ohio.